is. We're going to learn how to do before we do. There's safety and stability. So at any point, if it feels sketchy, it probably is. Another good adage for that is soft is sketchy. In jiu-jitsu, a lot of times you want to be the wiggly worm. In strength training, almost always, you want to be the pencil. You want to be locked up and braced up. We learned a lot about that yesterday. One of the strongest dudes I've ever seen train that was doing a ton of questionable stuff with strength training. And as soon as we adjusted it, every, every weight in the room looked like a baby rattle. That's what I expect from, from, mo from most people today. And when we're talking about bracing and hardening yourself up, a simple concept is fat, not tall. So you're making that fat belt, you're, you're pushing into an imaginary weight belt while staying tall and broad chested. So when we brace up for weightlifting, we're not making ourselves taller and compressing this area, we're making it into a barrel that can sustain a heavy load, it can sustain a strike, it can sustain a fall. It's one of the most common things we see is people start to breathe in really tall, they get really weak, it's impossible to keep their spinal position, and then that's when people underlift weight and or get hurt. So I wish I had some of my students here from our martial arts class here listening to this. Well, well, well they will, you know, and, and that's that's part of the reason we're doing we're doing it this time, and we'll, and we'll do it again. What we bring to the table with anyone, even something different like what we did with Sky's Place earlier in the week, is transferable concepts. Whether it's transferring the details of a different implement, <coughs> but the same movement patterns to a strength training place like Sky's to transferring the same details of these implements or ground strategies or anything else to a place that's uh, much more focused on fighting. If you're doing nine things right and one thing poorly, we want to dissect that one thing poorly so that we're doing everything at the same level. If we're missing one thing, that's the thing that's going to come up and, and get you. So, so today, one request we make is everyone's a safety monitor, everyone's looking out for each other. But unless you're designated as, you're not an instructor. The nice thing about a day like today is we don't have to guess. So let's not guess. Let's just slow down and pay attention. Small group of attender folks. Uh, there's no reason to rush through anything. There's also no reason to editorialize. The fun stuff is fun, but it's better at the end. Once the main positions are on track, then the other stuff makes a lot more sense. Kettlebell flips and all this other stuff is, is a lot of fun, but it's far less useful than actual strength, power, and balance of action. One leads to the other. The others never lead back. A lot of times, people that prioritize tricks is all they can do is tricks. Any questions? That makes sense, everybody. So we're going to look at all the major movement patterns first, kind of assess everybody a little bit differently, just like we did yesterday, and then get started with, with things like Deadlift, kettlebell swing, pendulum roll, good mornings, mace shovels, so a hinge position. And then <coughs> squatting, things like a, an actual squat with implements in several different positions, a ground to shoulder lift that also starts in more of a squat position. Uh, and then we'll start getting into rotational stuff and, and overhead stuff. If you have any actual limitations, We'll be able to see them, but if you want to mention them ahead of time, you're welcome to. If the limitation is positional, then we'll address it, but don't think about it as a restriction. Think about it as an opportunity. Any questions on any of that? No, sir. Right. Sure. This today, because once we've all practiced swinging, there's still only maybe half of the amount of weight that we would need to prove this. A good indicator of that is once we have a strong kettlebell swing, half your body weight for a handful of 10 rep sets is a relatively baseline standard. Uh, again, that might sound high right now, but even after yesterday, does that sound high anymore? No. no. So kettlebell swing breathing, you're bracing on the way down, and if you're breathing at all, you're just sipping on the way up, almost like a ki, but not for the sake of itself. Soft is sketchy, especially when there's a gigantic weight swinging between your legs. When we hold the handle, bend it into a frown, so you're engaging your upper back. 
if we have trouble with that position or if we get to a weight that doesn't actually fit through there, then the piston grip position is this. Fingers overlap over the middle knuckle, not the big knuckles. Thumbs seam up in the center, so actually like you're holding actually like you're holding a pistol. So you're not you're not gonna hold a pistol like this, you're not gonna hold a pistol like this, you're certainly not gonna hold one like this. To get the weight up, we deadlift. The handle of the kettlebell tracks the same path as a bar would track. So if this was 300 pounds, you're going to lift it the same as if it's 30 pounds. One will, one will lead to the other. Start off your hip. Don't go back there. tools here, address these things uh, like they're a sacred implement. This doesn't have to be meditative, it needs to be violent, but we want to treat these things like they're important to us. Okay, so first, unweighted hinge, find enough tension on hard ground that you feel what we're supposed to feel. If you're not feeling it, then we got to address it. Um, and then we'll start deadlifting the weight up, and then short sets of five to seven reps of kettlebell swing. Once that is old news, and we've kind of checked the box that the position is sound, then we start climbing up. Good? Great. Ask questions, don't guess. Please bring the weights out. Don't knock the mace over. That's a great question. That's a great question. The arms will only get a bend as the byproduct of keeping the chest broad. So these are relaxed and short but straight. So if they look bent at all, it was basically because I'm just trying to keep my shoulders close. You think about the distance of the weight from your body. And most of these aren't going to fall enough to have to improve that. Yeah. But like when it's really heavy, you don't want to transfer it too far from the body. Sure. So there should be two eye positions in a hinge one down, one up. So that's a great place to start. And then heels down, brace hard, and snap your legs straight. So if your heels are down and your guts are braced, fat not tall, unless you have way too much weight, you will not get hurt. And we can goof around with the position. Someone else? So pause. So hang about your head. You should be on the ground and then up. As long as your heels are down, don't have to take it down. Yeah, exactly. Yeah, exactly. Bend your legs enough to load those springs. Is it almost like I'm going to yeah, sit back in a chair? Pressure, like a chair. Back, but not Four, down, exactly. So a real interesting four, physical three. cue that we use is like if you were learning the hand job to say, don't touch my hand with your knee. Push the butt back. Don't touch it. Your hands yep, don't touch it. Push it back. There we go. Yes. So right there. Drive your knees out as hard as you can. Yeah, you would swing as much weight as you want to lift right now with that position. So, okay, so as you're saying, it's I'm trying to go. Yep, head down. Yep, right there. So that's as far down as you go because you're almost parallel with yourself. Gotcha. Okay. Yep. And then that's where the springs are loaded the hardest though. So now, drive your knees out. I'm here. Make that big fat belly. And then when you snap your legs straight with your heels down, you'll feel that pop from right off the ground. Wow, and okay, yeah. Think about the, hip, the hips. So, like almost like resting them. And neutral, but straight and yeah. hard. Yeah. And the legs also neutral, but straight and hard. So okay. you're not swimming. Coming yeah. forward. Right? Gotcha. You're snapping. <laughs> All right. Yep. Let's try a little bit lighter one. And if we haven't established a strong, unweighted hinge and a deadlift, that is the precursor to the kettlebell swing. If we can't do a hinge, the swing is not going to work great. So hinge is at the back. Good. 100% better from yesterday. Yeah. Good. <laughs> that grounding helps. Yeah. 
back down. Same way. I just bring it up. Unweight hinge first. Yeah. Is that what you got down? That's going to be Push your butt back. That way you can start. Yeah, so, so, so one of the questions is don't touch my leg. Push your butt back. Just, just level up. Oh, exactly. I think I got here short. Three hours. So from that exact position, we're just going to stand that weight up a few times. Greg, is it better to uh, start with a deadlift and yeah, kind of get that down and just understand that position before you ever start swinging? Absolutely. So, so unweighted oh, hinges right. first, oh, yeah. deadlift up is is second, and then once those two things are in order, then then the swing is there. Um, the the swing sometimes resonates better than even the simple versions of the lift because it essentially forces position. But if someone can't get into a strong unweighted hinge, then the, then the swing isn't a good idea. And mind your heads, you should be looking at the floor when we start and looking at the front when we end. Try this to fast. Take your head down. And so a deadlift will come from the ground and back to the ground every time. And there your feet up, please. So your foot width, pause, put the weight down. Your foot width it's going to be based on the amount of tension you can create on the ground. So in something like a deadlift, and we learned this yesterday, yeah. we, adjust, we adjust chase his feet just the littlest bit from maybe like this position to this position. And all of a sudden, everything was like a rocket ship. The speed and power was, was right there because he was able to effectively load the springs. So le leg length uh, governs foot position, but too wide is too wide. So even tall people, the goal should be bookend as much as you can and then load everything up so we'll narrow your feet and then we'll restart yep yourself set back and your heels should be really firm on the ground and then broaden your chest. Try to pull my hands. Like that, I'll let that open up. Pause. So let's look at a couple of tricks we'll use to teach the hinge. <coughs> so some's having trouble figuring out where the hinge position is. One way we could trick them into that is putting this across their back into a good morning style position. So once this thing is locked in place, I want to find all the points of contact. So right now, we can agree that this is what my spine should look like in a heavy kettlebell swing. Yes? Yes. 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 As I load the springs, I start to push down. This helps me find my ideal hinge. If I know I've gone too far, then I broke position. That's not a perfect hinge. If I'm upright and I can't keep my balance or my heels come up, then I know that I'm in more of a squat. So once I put this thing across my back and load, if I were to transfer this to reaching down to grab a barbell, hiking the weight high in my hips for a kettlebell swing, it's the exact same position. Mm -hmm. It's also a really strong warm up for exactly what we're doing right now. So. <clears throat> and then we'll help him address this with this. So safely climb this thing behind you just like I did. Pump the brakes, stand up. Just brace yourself up. Now, narrow your feet like we asked. Yep, keep them going. Yeah. Now, this, thing, hold, this whole thing should rest on your back. Better? Put your head on the way. Yep. Good. Now, brace. Make a fat belly. Do not move your knees forward. Push your butt back. Now, tip your chest forward, though. Good. Push your butt back again. Tip your chest forward, man, like a hinge. Tip your chest forward. There we go. So now we're somewhere, right? Mm -hmm. Okay, so now stand up. Collect your thoughts. Do the exact same thing again. Our way, not your way. There we go. Tip your chest forward, please. Don't move your knees forward. There we go. Good. Now do five of those exactly like that. And if your knees move forward, then omit it and repeat it. 
Good. So anyone else is having trouble finding that hard bottom of the hinge position, let's grab a mace and we'll put it right in there. Oh, this feels so good. Yeah, this is a, this is something I like doing in the morning. It's just to wake up. <laughs> it's it's like, so it's like, like a coffee right. mace. Good morning. Yeah, yeah I, 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 I agree. I don't know you guys have been told to take kids. Don't look at the back. Yeah, getting chest balls. Yeah, gotcha. Yeah, yeah, gotcha, gotcha. Now you're hinging. Feel it here. The whole time. Now you're sitting. Yeah, yeah, yeah. 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 Yeah, y
Good. 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 Questions on that? Let's get a couple more practice reps. Ahead of us. If we're losing the hinge or if we're not sure on it yet, uh, let's get a mace back there. Grab a weight, guys. Don't be uh, don't be shy. So you you may or may get some not. experience. It doesn't feel comfortable right now. But I don't think that's wrong. I'm not a shifty. You have a hard time with being shy. So, it's okay. So, yeah. <laughs> your feet for you know me. I like to hide in the background. Yeah, yeah, right. Yeah. I see that. You're not going to be able to drive your knees out hard enough. So, so like more of a risk than over bending the knees. So unless you have way too heavy of a weight, this is not an ideal position, but it's still going to be all right. This is really sketchy. Yeah. Unless it's crazy. absolutely done for a reason. Yeah. That's it. So certain people that are. Weightlifters will lift from that position for a reason. Unless you're lifting there for a reason, it's unsafe, especially with, with a dynamic movement like a kettlebell swing. So bend your knees. You got the advantage of a mirror, which is something we usually don't have. If you're goofing something up, don't guess. Find, find, find the position. <clears throat> when we're in this hinge, we'll look at a mace shovel in a moment. Um, we looked at the good morning. We'll look at the good morning with a kettlebell and the row with a kettlebell, and then we'll continue to move on. The good morning with a kettlebell is just a deadlift that we tuck into our bodies and push down, but don't go to the ground. I have never seen a good weightlifter an outstanding martial artist, or especially a good kettlebell lifter with a weak upper back. And a good morning in this way, where you're forced to engage and keep that weight close to you the whole time, builds a gigantically strong upper back. What we're gonna find again, is just most of these weights, once we're in the proper hinge, aren't gonna be heavy enough, but it's at least gonna give you an indication of what that should feel like. So bend these things, tuck them in, keep the weight attached to your body. Deadlift always goes to the floor. Good morning never goes to the floor. Yeah. So you're Same. holding the kettlebell just under your belly button then? Just uh, kind well, of out on your hip line? And, and it varies by weight. I mean, okay. these are really, really valuable, really, really heavy. And then you won't be able to keep it all the way in the pocket. Right. But you'll still keep it here. So gotcha. if, this, if this was twice or three times the weight that it is, it may be this. Right? right? But I'm okay. still not going to the ground. Gotcha. Gotcha. So right you. now, with lightweight, where are you, where are you recommended? Find, just find it. Just yeah, okay. find find a hinge that if you held down there for too long, you would go to sleep. And you're breathing? No, never. Yeah, yeah. No. soft, soft is sketchy. When, when you're loaded in something like that, uh, that's very valuable, but but easy to compromise. Uh, no breathing. Yeah, no breathing. Yeah. Kettlebell row is the same exact thing. We often do this anchored as um kind of a counterbalance and also just a stabilizer. The single arm one, find some type of mechanical anchor. Put your hand on your body, put your hand on your hips, make a fist, something like that. In kettlebell lifting, the non-working arm is never non-working, just as in fighting. I mean, short of Art Jimerson, I don't know if I've ever seen anybody where this arm was actually out of play. So both arms, are, <laughs> both arms, I'm glad someone got that. Both, both arms are in play. So when, when we row, it's the same hinge as we would set up a deadlift. We always row from the pistol grip. If you're going to row with a neutral grip, it happens from a barbell. Strong people are going to get away with this, but it's just more valuable here. The other reason is, why? Lighting the corners. If we're rowing from here with a heavier object, we row from here with a slightly lighter object, we're just insulating more of this important area. We're also staying away from this really vulnerable area. Everyone's seeing stupid fucking jocks that have been bench pressing for 30 years and all they complain about all the time is their hot shoulders. Let's get you doing the same thing wrong for 30 fucking years. Unless you address it, it's not going to improve. So, with kettlebell row, weight starts behind your foot, just a little bit behind your foot, and your leg length will govern sometimes. I'm turning the weight. So counterclockwise on my left hand, clockwise on my right hand, but locking that thing into place. Don't smash your feet. 
Good? <laughs> Good. We're, we're not standing up to pull the weight. We're driving down to meet the weight. So again, if this was really, really heavy, the tendency is going to be, don't do this. I'm driving down to find it. Mm. Okay. Okay. So good morning. Good mornings. Kettlebell rows. Kettlebell In that order, please. Yeah. So make your checklist. No breathing. Big fat belly. Don't touch my hand. I'm not going to put it there, but think about it there. And then snap your legs straight. Heels are down. Bam. Kicking hips. There we go. More violent. Good pause. That's Good. awesome. So the way that 55 will turn into 70, which will turn into 90, which will turn into 106, is five to seven rep sets with like just enough to catch your breath. So we usually use 15 seconds. Three, three breaths or less, unless something is a significant percentage of your body weight. So when we're operating at under maybe 50 or 60 percent of our body weight, the rest should be based on the weight. You know, if, if you're a kettlebell swinging 150, 160 pounds, then that's more the equivalent of a weightlifting set. So you can rest longer. Um, the output governs the rest. Is that something? Yeah, good idea finding the hinge with your hands, man. Good. So you're long, bend your knees more, open your toes a little bit, and squish the hinge down. Yeah, just, just here, not here. So if I'm pushing this, squish this, this broadens into my hand. Don't push into my hand, though. No, no, squ with square shoulders. Yes. Now brace, now pull. And that's not going to feel heavy, but you feel what I'm saying? Good. Yes. Head neutral and bend your knees more. Head neutral and bend your knees more. And, and so don't, you don't need to change your foot right here. Just, just either toe out and push your butt back. There you go. There you go. See how much stronger that feels? You just bought yourself three inches of range by just tipping your head down. Let, 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 let's take a look here for a moment. He, he just did a really good job assessing and addressing something. Um, he, he, do the one you did before. So he was doing a good morning where his knees were dropping forward and his head was up. Okay, so he's not going to die there, but it's not optimal and it's never going to be heavy. So once he drives his knees out, tips his head down, and then pushes his butt back, Look at all the range he bought. Look at the stability he bought. Also, do it again and hold it. Watch his body shake. What do we know about that? It means we're building strength and the springs are loaded. Good, thank you. Excellent. Keep practicing. Kettlebell, good morning. Kettlebell roll. Short, hard sets and then, and then we'll... So that looks great. That's not going to be nearly enough weight to prove it. So, right, so, right. so let's get let's get let's yes. get any of these. Even that's not going to be enough. So we'll we'll jump right in here on one of these two when they're done. You, you adjusted that well, so now we're on pad. Yeah. Chase and I were just talking about that. His hands on his chest. Like, yeah. like, I personally, when I do rows, I like to be right here, unless it's like uh, my final set, in which case my arm will be free, and I'm just because at that point I'm just that's the bottom and top left side. Of the my, so my eye is putting it right here, so I can feel my hinge and I can feel that tightness. So that way I know if I go slack at any point, this it's just another physical. Nice, Brandon. Narrow as they can be, but as wide as they need to be. 
Can you say that again, Gary? As, as you, a concept on where your feet are is as narrow as they can be, but as wide as they need to be. We want to be able to make maximum tension on the ground when we're lifting heavy things. Yeah, for my education, could you explain the breath one more time? Because I know I've been doing it wrong. I get that today. And, 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 and just, just to editorialize on it for a second, there's a lot of schools of thought on this. Mine is based on 25 years of martial arts experience, 17 years of excellent strength and conditioning, and 15 years of running a gym, the last 10 of which I believe is running the best strength and conditioning gym in the world. So you can do. Anytime we're moving heavy weight, we are braced as hard as we possibly can be. If we're breathing at all, it's a sip, not a gulp. And we are never fully relaxed when loaded with anything suitably heavy. Does that make sense, everybody? Yes. If you can be soft while lifting weights, you are not lifting enough weight to actually make you stronger. And that gets into a conversation that we had yesterday, which is the relativity of weight. So if Chase swings a 25 pound kettlebell, he is going to need to do an insurmountable amount of reps to gain any strength. And even then, there's an argument of whether what you're actually building is just strength or mental endurance. Until you get into percentages of your body weight or percentages of your barbell lifts or something like that, you're not actually building strength with too light of a weight. So the breathing becomes extra important when that comes into play. 25 pounds, Chase can breathe however he wants. He's never going to get hurt. But the other thing is he's also never going to get stronger. So we have to follow the trail of crumbs that leads to the heavyweight. You don't just jump right to the heavy weight and think everything's going to fix itself. Details, details lead to progress. Um, one does not lead back to the other. <laughs> Questions on what we're up to so far? Hinges, good. We're at least somewhere that we weren't. We'll, re we'll revisit that in a moment with a mace shovel. Before we do the mace shovel, we'll do, like, we'll, we'll do an overhead assessment with the, with the kettlebell halo uh, and extension. <clears throat> Next, when we're, when we're talking about a squat, I'm going to squat with weight, but we're going to practice with either less weight or a different tool for a different strategy. Exact opposite position of a hinge. Chest is up, not up and back, but not pointed at the ground. You're still driving the knees out as hard as you can, but the foot position will change. For some people, it can be narrower with toes out a little bit. Um, unless we have a reason to do so, we're not going to squat from here. Same cue applies with your feet. As narrow as they can be, but as wide as they need to be. So bracing before I drop. So before I move, not during, I'm putting that big fat belly on. Everything is anchored in tight. There's nothing casual about this position. the ground than a squat. If your heels are up in a squat, we made a mistake. Chances are also strong that if your heels come up in a squat, it's safe to put the weight down as quickly as possible. Because when the heels up is going to come in to play in a bad way, is on the way up. You may not get caught with it here, but if you start driving up with anything heavy on the balls of your feet without a reason to do so, then that's when it starts to get a little dicey. So when we start learning to squat, we're going to squat from one implement in the middle, brace this thing. If we find ourselves tipping too far forward, we'll add this third point of contact by putting our heads right on the weight. And then we'll retrace our steps right to the ground. Get some of the lighter maces, we'll go over that in a moment. With the kettlebell, the way we get it into the goblet position, the goblet squat position is this, is legs, hip, arm last, just as if we were lifting a ground to shoulder as the training modality itself. So instead of just casually crappy picking that up, we'll brace tall. And then before we lift it, we wanna make it float. Broaden your chest out, bend it into a frown, same kettlebell swing hips. When it's weightless, transfer your hands to the side. Okay, 
Hey, one of those little maces. One of those little ones. One of the black ones on the wall, man. Thank you. You want the smaller one or the bigger one? Yeah, smaller one. Thanks. So if we're learning to squat, or there's any holes in the boat, we'll squat with one of these first. Because even though this is considerably lighter, the leverage creates super amounts of tension and, and really helps standardize positioning. So without stretching your arms too far, we'll just squat with this here. All mechanics are still exactly the same. If that's still getting away from us and we're still missing anything tension-wise, we're just going to tip this lever forward. And that will either fix it or fix it. Good? Good. So let's assess the squat with an anchored squat hinge. We'll take a light weight, hold it however makes sense for you. And we're just going to go from what is at least most of a hinge into what is at least most of a squat. This is a warm up. This is greasing the groove. This is not a training position. This is a warm up position. So this is a not perfect hinge, correct? Mm -hmm. This is a not perfect squat, correct? Mm -hmm. The characteristics are there of each. We're gonna do this, we're gonna floss through both. Mm -hmm. Now that we're entering into both, this will help make the distinction between. This will be especially helpful for you. Okay, all right. Squat hinge and then we practice squat. We should be locked in. If you see that I'm breathing hard after a couple of squat hinges, that should be an indicator of something for you. you you're braced up and aggressive in that position. Heads are neutral. Narrow your feet up a little. Narrow your feet up a little. Yep. Elbows inside, please. Of course. Yeah. Okay, good. Okay, better. Keep your elbows inside and always think about those knees apart. And some of this is just inexperience in the position, you know what I mean? But if we address it now, you won't fuck it up later and get hurt. Put your elbows inside further. So you're tall, so you gotta move them up. Move your elbows up, uh, up into here. Yep, and then sit yourself up taller. Good. Now brace yourself again. Push back into the hinge. Now leave your elbows inside and sneak back into the squat. See our legs just started shaking? Ah, you made that right, the one rep. Do it again. Push your butt back. Good. Back into the squat. There we go. Good. Better, man. Good Now, don't do the same thing wrong every time after I correct you. Make a mental note. Push your butt back. Sure is happy today. Yeah, there we go. Don't, don't let your shoulders below your hips. And what you're doing is good, and it's the actual hinge, but, but uh, kind of hybridize it a little mm -hmm. bit. Like, get down further. Get down. And try and get your arms, like, in between there just to make some tension to warm up. Once we have some sound mechanics, enough weight to make it work is important. Sometimes we're just going to muscle something because it's not heavy enough to make us do otherwise. Good. Curvy go. Good, guys. Curvy knees, curvy knees, curvy knees, curvy knees. No, I don't think so. Narrow your feet a little bit. Narrow your feet a little bit. Yep. Grab a hold of that thing. Yeah, don't no, lift again. No, thank you. Brace. No. Someone's got to encourage this guy. Of course, yeah. Yeah. Why is he not? Yeah. Absolutely. And jump. Chase, just like, wake up, cop. That, that, that help a little bit? Yeah, yeah, that's that's not doing that. That's good. Yeah. It was just like, good. <laughs> that was the part. That was the race, part. square. Oh, yeah, I remember that. Jump. <laughs> yes. So as soon as you guys are cracking up, you guys are all like, angle, angle, angle. Or somebody was over there. You guys are more. Spot last night. Yeah, that was the one you released. Yeah. So, we're going to look at one more thing with the kettlebells. 
a little bit more assessment, and then we'll take a, uh, take a quick break, and then we'll come back and we'll, we'll look at bases. After we do the base stuff, then we're going to start looking at transferable concepts from things like Turkish get-up to martial arts, Fuck yeah. things like the kettlebell swing to throws, yeah. things like the medicine ball throws into striking, yeah. and things like that. Um, so we'll go over this in a minute, but there's a, there's a one minute one that I want to um, strategize. And it's that Turkish get-up adaptation gotcha. we did yesterday. Gotcha. So it's good. So before we move into the maces, we want to assess people's overhead position. If people can't get their arms above their heads with wrist straight and their hands somewhere near behind their heads, then it's not super safe to have people swinging maces back there. Mm -hmm. um, and again, that's sometimes why people toss the mace out is they push it once, clunky, it hurts them because it's wrong and then they don't. Uh, use it they, they hit with it because they don't have the mobility. <laughs> or, or they just don't understand where the mace is supposed to travel. Yeah. Um, if you, you get 50 points today, if you leg sweep yourself. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah, mace foot sweeps, that's, yeah. that's a level three. I want to see it so bad. <laughs> I don't. I don't do so when, when we look at the kettlebell halo, we're going to grab this thing inside the horns, and then we're going to bend it into a frown. Hips are tucked, chest is broad, and the halo itself is just going to spin, touch the back, and come back to the front. So what do we notice right now? This is touching my back, but I'm not in this giant extension. This position is a recipe for hitting yourself with a mace. And it's funny to watch, but it's not what we're trying to do. So keep your hips tucked, keep your hands behind your head, but not at your spine. And then we finish that rotation to the front. Once we've done that safely, and then with lighter weight, then we'll add the extension, which is just—it's a really—it's a great—it's a really great uh, position to do training in. It's also a great assessment for the mace. So once we turn this thing around to the back, brace, snap your wrist straight, carefully back to your back. Let me turn. So halo first, then the extension. These are too heavy for extension if we haven't ever done it before. So use the light ones right now. This is also a great warm up for the press, which we'll do in a little while. Go back. And over your heads, your wrists are straight. We're not gonna halo extension with wrist bent any more than we're gonna punch with a wrist bent. in the back, especially since we're assessing that shoulder. So spin that thing around, pause, square yourself up, try and keep your spine straight. Now is that hurting or is it just new? No, this is new. All right, so now keep up with your straight line. Now spin it back to the front. Okay, I think that might be a tiny bit too heavy, man, or snap your wrist straight, either both. Yeah, well, I think I'm gonna try later. Really. Yep, I'm sure. <laughs> And the halo with the extension is sneaky. Strong people have trouble extending their arms nice, straight here. We man. understand that. So start start lighter until your arms and your wrists can be 100% straight. And if you don't have access to a dip bar um, and you don't want to do prison bench dips, which are an excellent choice also, this is a great back arm builder. Mm -hmm. And snap the wrist straight. Yeah, good. There we go. Three seconds straight. Yep. Hold three seconds for a straight. There you go. Do it again. Straight, straight, straight. Push it right into the roof. There you go. Yeah, I think uh, we might need a towel to wipe that one off. <laughs> I think someone got, just slick someone got excited on that one. <laughs> And what we're watching he's right now is he's, he's trying to do what I'm saying. It's just an unfamiliar position. It's the same thing we find with the Mason. No one's ever moved weight back there before. It feels really foreign at first. 
And that's an excellent indicator. It's great to get stuck back there and not force it. I've done it about five times and I got yeah. stuck that time. Yeah, yeah I couldn't push. I couldn't push. Yeah. Everyone on the ground. That was my point of failure right there. Yeah, exactly. So are you kind of trying to be pinching toed on this one? Or are you not sure how much you're You're always locked into the floor. It's hard to get on the foot position on this play. That's important. Okay. So it can be wider if you want it to be wider, but it should never be this. It kind of seems like you're kind of like bringing away a little bit. I, 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 I try and get behind us. Everything else that we've done so far was a precursor to the same movement patterns with a different tool. The mace shovel happens from the exact same hinge that everything else has happened with. Backhand is at the end of the mace. A, a good rule of thumb is, unless there's an absolute reason not to, the hand goes at the end and it stays there. The only time I've ever seen anyone eat one of these things is when they start choking up. There are usually ways to assess and address position without having to choke up on the base. Occasionally that's not true, of course, especially when we have shorter tools in play. Sledgehammers are also an excellent choice there. Holding this thing at the end um, ensures that it's never going to hit you anywhere you don't want it to hit you. The shovel happens from a medium hand position. If we have to be here, it's too heavy. But we can be all the way up as far as we want and it just gets really, really hard. That's great. Too, too low too low is too low. I'm not really sure if there's such a thing as too high. We've had people do really successful mace shovels from super close. We'll start about here, and then in a hinge and using that same leg, hip, arm, last series we use to lift the kettlebells. Waiting for your hips to move your hand, we'll shoot both arms overhead. Once we're overhead, both arms are 100% straight and above eye line. They're also over their respective tracks. So left is over the left, right, right is over the right. You can adjust little intervals here, but we're not going to come across. And then this hand goes right back in your pocket. Good. Oops, let's take a moment and mace shovel. Don't hit the lights. Yeah, I'll go left and closer to you. And what we should be able to do is take a look. Let's take a look for a moment. So, so his hand was out a little bit. Now we're going to put it in his pocket and move the other hand over. And now he should be able to square his shoulders. So bend your legs a little bit into a hard hinge. Yeah. Now he should be able to square his shoulders. That's going to make a much stronger pull off the ground. If he's angled offset like this, one side is going to work before the other. It's impossible that it, that it doesn't. So square yourself up, bend that weight. Now leg, hip, arm last. Let your hips throw that weight overhead. Yep, good. Straight, strong, left on the left. There we go. Yeah. Good. And at the top, we should be rock solid, straight line. Leg, hip, arm last, and then everything else straight. So straighten your legs hard, straighten your arms hard. Yeah. So leg, hip, arm last, be patient and move with power. And this is a leg lift, so hinge just like you're lifting the weights. Especially with long arms, that might be too short. Let's get one of these eight kids. 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 Let
Yeah. So put this, if I line that up with my toad, and exactly. that's really square. So right on the right, left on the left, now you're yeah. square. Uh, yeah. And now, we're, now we're pop the hips. Pop the hips. Now, the hips. now it is still square all at once. It won't be one side to another, it'll be both sides at once. So we've got left hand hip. Let's square it up. Brace. Head about swing. And then all the way up to the other. The only other left one makes is actually put this in your pocket. Oh, this is not yes. Now wait for your hips to hit your hand. Uh, <laughs> I just thought that was back. so red. You almost just put that thing through the back wall. I could have. I could so, have. so hand in your pocket and square your shoulders. Yeah, yeah. So this is the key. Okay, so my shoulders are square. This is in line. Okay, so I'll get that. I'll drive it now. Yeah. Once you're going to do is just drive forward with the hips up straight. I was watching Chase when he just acted like a kettlebell. It looked like he was weight loss. Like he was throwing it off the hill. Yeah, I had to go back down. Like he said, arms last or whatever he says over there. You got longer arms. Kind of extend the guy out a little bit. Yeah, there you go. Yeah. Yeah. So that way you're back and It's all. See how much stronger that was? Straight arms. You may need to try the eight. Yeah. Especially here after your shoulders messed up. Yeah, try the eight. Tanner's got a handy. You ready for the ten, Brendan? Yeah. Yes. See how that is pretty. Straight shoulders. Shoulders square, Elliot. Yeah. Yeah. Chest forward. You never know. You can see the speed on that thing now. Yeah. Tiny adjustment. Yeah. That looks 100% better. Pause to put that thing down. So if we haven't, let's make sure we get a couple on each side with an 8 kilogram mace with a standardized overhead position. So everything is straight. And at, at no point is the mace coming away from our body in the start position. So when we start, the handle of the mace is in your pocket. The other hand is attached somewhere to your leg. This is close to your body. And you're waiting for your hips to throw your hand. If there's not physical attachment here, the tendency is going to be to just arm lift this thing. So put this in your pocket and wait for it. Good. And then grab an eight kilogram and we'll get on the hard mats and we'll go back. If we're still learning or we're struggling with position, stable feet is going to be easier and stronger. Straight, up, straight on. And wide your hands, please. Pause. So then you like to get that in here. So that's there. Yeah, it's only here like, oh. It's times 2.1. Nice, so it's like 20 pounds. You can still get it. Yeah, you can still get it. And it just adds some more to the spectrum. I really like that. Like so he designed it actually made it great. Uh, oh, is that where you got it from? Yeah. He was like, hey, so what, what, when we're moving face? this thing, the lead, the, 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 the lead arm starts and stays straight. This is your lever. This is your fulcrum. If this bends, this is considerably heavier and way sketchier. So this locks into place with the arm straight. He was doing a good job addressing everything, but he was curling this underneath. That's not really gonna work, and it's not really gonna work heavy. So straight arm, back arm in your pocket. Good. Okay. Yes, sir. A couple more each side, and then we're gonna good press job. from there. Again. I do it all the time. Yeah. Man, I've been like, I've been using that to help recover people with shoulder things. Yeah. It's yeah, because you can. Once, once we get overhead in the shovel, let's take a look at the press from the shovel. That's not good. Before I found Wolf for it out, came up and Once this thing is overhead, everything is locked in place just as we have for the rest of the lifts. The right hand is going to come down into what would be the same kettlebell rack position. 
left hand presses the entire time. So both hands are pushing, but only one hand is moving. If this gets wiggly, then this just becomes not really as valuable. So the bottom hand drives hard and straight, and then we'll press. This is really, really great for people with shoulder injuries. The, the, the reason behind this press was a torn labrum and still wanting to press things and knowing that I couldn't risk at all getting into internal rotation. So even done really meticulously with a kettlebell, you're gonna goof up. This thing prohibits internal rotation by having a handle. So when we press, you can move any tick on the dial to get to whatever position in the press you want, and you still won't you still won't find any of this internal rotator mm -hmm. stuff. I'm curious if this is gonna help your shoulder to get more. So, a couple things we're not gonna do. <laughs> not right now, right? If there's a reason, there's a reason. But right now, when we're actually just learning the press, we wanna keep the mechanics of any other press. If I was to move my hands parallel with each other, this is just the overhead barbell press. If I was to remove my left hand entirely, it's a kettlebell press. If I was to square my shoulders again, it's a pull-up. If I was to turn myself over, it's a handstand push-up. See where I'm going? Bam! So everything stays braced at the bottom. So over your head is over your head. If you're pressing in the front, uh, adjust to pressing over your head. A lot of times that's easy to adjust by pushing the bottom hand up higher and harder. Okay, ready? All right, mace shovel, presses, practice that. If we haven't ever done this before, uh, and that's most of you, we'll start here. Underestimate this thing. It is not heavy in weight, but it is heavy in relative weight. So address it like it's heavy. There you go. So now that the same arm we just moved around with. If this was across your body, that press would feel like shit. Yeah. Cool. Pain or restriction? Turn it a little bit this way. It's like blocking up. Bring it down as far as you can. Stay braced up. Straight. Good, space up. Pain or restriction? Yeah, man. You just found the pressure you can do it. My shoulder hurts. Good. Yep. So, because of that arm, always get up, down, always. Yeah, good. Go ahead and do it again. There we go. That's where I want your hand. Good. Pain or restriction? Good. 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 You said arts on his way? Yeah. So that's good. So I'm sure that you guys are faster. And you can still so press it. Right right so you should be here right after. It's just like like it's just, it's just not, there's no pain. Like it's just, just tight. That's good. <sighs> this stuff is so good. It's not. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, good. Yeah. 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 yeah that'll sit right in place. Yeah, good. 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 Yeah, Straight lines, you know, like you think about like in the middle. I knew he would. I knew he would. Go ahead. Yeah, you can tell what your arms are. Yeah, my like 
to scale the mace is moving the top hand towards the bottom hand. Again, we're going to try and anytime we can keep this thing at the butt end. But if, if, if we look and I think I could press from here all day, then same as we talked about with a 25 pound kettlebell, why would I want to press that all day? There's a ton of diminishing returns there, especially when what we're doing is straight to conditioning for something else. If all you're doing is mace pressing, then fucking mace press this 6,000 times. Good. Have fun. If what you're doing is the mace press to build strength, positioning, and power for something else, we want to get as much done as we possibly can, as well as we can, with as much as we can. Makes sense, right? Yes, sir. Strategy overwhelms volume. That's really the short answer to that. So if I could do this 50 times and I move to this, I may be able to do this five times. Uh, five better than fifty. If I can move this to here, one's better than the five. <laughs> Muscle recruitment, demand of positioning, and actual strength building happens with leverage, mechanics, and strategy, not necessarily repetitions. So the repetitions are practiced to learn and then the strategy is applied to build. Uh, mm. That makes sense, correct? Oh, yes, sir. So, wide, great. Tiny bit different angles, great. Narrow hands gets considerably harder. Get three each side, either changing weight or narrowing your hands so it makes you feel what it's supposed to make you feel. If the press sucks, don't do either. With the mace, uh, a little bit closer, a little bit further, and then appropriately, a little bit tipped, just a few times. We already went over the squat, but now that we've had our hands on the maces, uh, we'll just lift it the same way we lift it. The lift is different than the squat, so make them different. Practice a couple of squats, and, and, then, we'll, and then we'll come back, and then we'll start uh, front front pendulum. We'll start getting the same movement sideways. Good. Good. Mm -hmm. And hold on to that mace like you mean it. All the same bracing and mechanics as the kettlebell squats. And hands together and at the bottom, please. We'll scale this by pulling your arms closer to your body, not moving your hands on the mace. Yeah, watch the light. Yeah, that's great. <laughs> a little unsure of it. Brace up hard. That was purely just you being fearful of it. It was totally fun. Brace yourself. Move your arms in a little bit. Put a fat belt on. Be careful and patient. Look right here, not up. There you go. Harder. There we go. Magic. Very precise. Good. Toes out the time is good. 
Yeah. Yeah. Now more and more. Yeah. Yeah. And the deadlifts you want them more forward, but the, but the, the squat you want them out. And watch you drop a little parallel right there. Look further. Not further. There. There you go. Yeah. yeah. And that's subtle but valuable. Yeah. You just found it. <laughs> Yeah, there's a little bit of a lean. There you go. Yeah, like that's, that's all I had. I had like one, I was like, got it. Like two. I lost my balance. Right now, just do the shovel the way you're doing it. That was just a gentle. Like, that was me. I was like, three degrees, that's the least. Now, driving these out from the toes out. Yeah, and I'll find the actual balance. There we go. A little further in the back. Extend it out. Now, brace. Yeah. Now, if you were poking these brace, that would work. Do one more, do one brace like that. That's cool. Don't be a bitch. <laughs> <laughs> that little Let's midget. remember, if your heels are off the ground in a squat, we made a mistake. Oh. Oh, you you right. 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 Right in the positions that it would be a weightlifting movement, and then we'll transfer it to exactly how we would use it in more of a martial arts context. The only difference is the direction of, res of the resisted object. So if I'm doing a Turkish get up weighted, the resisted object is either on my shoulder or over my head. The resisted object is here, <laughs> my hand is in front. Everything else will, will stay the same. We teach the Turkish get up until it's well past half body weight from the top down because you want to know you can press something that you're going to expect to hold over your head. That makes sense, right? Mm -hmm. So from the clean that we just learned and then a push press weighted overhead, it would be a reverse lunge opposite leg. Eyes are still forward. Thumb is turned back just like the mace press forces us to do. As my hand starts traveling towards the ground, my eyes go on that weight. Why am I not staring at it here? Well, it can't be over your head if you're staring at it. So, hand goes on the ground, somewhere in front of the knee, and externally rotated. Thumb is to the back. Adjust out if you need space to kick your leg through, and then kick your leg through. All this stays braced up and hard. I saw some clown ass motherfucker, high level, some bullshit, teaching a Turkish get up from moving this foot around. No, that is not a thing. This is a kickstand. This is your lever. Shoulder, elbow, hand sit up to get to the grip, to get to the, to get to the knee again. Just retracing your steps to the ceiling. <coughs> Eyes forward again in the lunge. <coughs> Moving this off axis means you have to basically start from scratch at the bottom. Additionally, if this is really, really heavy and you start moving this around, this is going directly right here. So. Sometimes I really get upset when I see bad information that will definitely hurt people if they try it. And that is one of them. So, kickstand down, arms straight and strong, shoulder, elbow, hands sit up, just like you've been taught in here. Retracing your steps. If I'm using this to avoid someone, this is the exact same thing. You can anchor at the hip, you can anchor at the knee, you can anchor below the knee if that's a game you're playing today. We're not going to do that. Everything else, covered too, guys. everything else is exactly the same. Knee. Oh. Out. 
Chase asked a great question yesterday. Why not swing the leg all the way back through? Some people can, most people can't. The only disadvantage I've ever found there is when that happens, if the dexterity is not the same as bringing it to the knee, he has a ton of opportunity to capitalize on my imbalance. I am not good at going from here to flat foot. So in that moment, he would capitalize on that. Meanwhile, if I move and I go right to my knee and he starts turning directions or anything else, I can track him and then climb to my feet once I'm safe. Exactly what we teach. So, mechanics don't change. Arm position is the only thing that changes. Good? All right. So let's dissect some unweighted Turkish get-ups. Make your fist the weight. Squeeze that thing like it's important. Okay? All right. Reverse lunge, opposite leg. Thumb points to the back. Arm is overhead. Eyes are forward. As the hand travels to the ground, eyes go out in the weight. Swing your legs through, keep your hand over your head. And Kirby will switch your legs, man, so we want the other leg. Once you're on your back, collect your thoughts, retrace your step back to the ceiling. So wrong leg. The biggest learning curve here for people is the thumb back. If your thumb is neutral now, when it's heavy and you're tired, it will be here and the weight will fall right into the pocket. So thumb to the back, arm straight. Remember how well we all press the mace? It's exactly the same. Eyes forward. Watch this. Do it again. Don't fuck your head up. Slow. No, do the whole thing. Man. Okay. Do it from standing. Like both of you. Reverse lunge up to the leg. Knee on the ground. Good. Now, as your hand goes to the ground, your eyes go on the weight. Good. Swing the zips through. Keep your eyes on there. Good. Now your sit-up is great. That's what I wanted to show people. You. Turn your thumb back as you're sitting up. So as he throws shoulder, elbow, hand, he's going to keep turning that thumb back and out towards me. Keep it going. Get on your hand. Good. Turn your thumb towards me. Good. Now slow down. Head forward. Fat belly. Stand up. That's the game changer in the heavy get-up. If you're staring forward when you're trying to finish standing that get-up up, but that's when it goes out the window. So adjust, adjust those eye positions. In the lunge, the eyes are forward. The rest of the time, you're staring at that thing. Good job. So think about this exactly like your squat. So this is planted hard, and your knee's driving out hard. Yeah, that's your kickstand. That's why, that's, that's why I saw that dude teaching that the other day, and I was like, you know, what kind of weight have you ever seen in the Turkish get up? Anyway. And then, sh and then, so let's look at the sit up. So if you, if you try and just sit up, or you try and sit up with mostly strength and little momentum, there is a glass ceiling on this thing that is not very high, right? Yeah. Strongest people I've seen, strongest guts, they try and sit straight up it's not going to be heavy enough to really make them stronger. So the shoulder, elbow, hand sit up is shoulder, elbow, and hand like you mean it. That's the other value of turning the thumb back. If you throw this as dynamically as you need to when the thumb is turning in, the weight will go on the ground. Meanwhile, if I throw the shoulder down and the thumb turns back, it stays exactly where I want it to. And that's how we have a person with a 165 pound barbell Turkish get up, a handful of girls with 100 pound Turkish get ups, and a 63 year old dude with a half his body weight Turkish get up. Yeah. Safe, legit. You know, it's not, not saying that you show off, it's just saying that sometimes the proof is in the pudding. All right. You know?
trust me, you'll only make the mistake of your thumb sideways a couple times. You'll get tired of punching yourself as you roll. I, I also agree with that. Yeah. And you're going to get sick of dropping weight that you can otherwise yeah. lift. Yeah. So let, let's practice one or two more. And then once we've got a couple of good ones, then just practice one with the eyes forward and the hands forward, but everything else being exactly the same. So like as I would be here pressing up, I'm just staying in my fight stance, and then when I do the drill, I just switch to my. That's great. Let's see here then. This one. Yeah. <laughs> And then so sneak, so sneak this leaf, though, you were good. Go back to where you were. Sneak this leaf without the sword, last step. And then this, um, this one stays flat, and this leaf pushes out of the spot where it is at. Your leg length will govern your foot position. You don't want to be here. It's almost impossible to stand up strong here. So this stays flat, but then where it lives from there is going to be based on your mobility and your leg length. When I start to sit up, I don't want this thing obstructing the kick through. Good. Let's practice that with that in mind just a few times. One offset. It, it wouldn't feel right. That would right. self-correct immediately. Right. Um, meanwhile, you'd never end a fighting one square. Square, exactly. So, so a, lo a lot of that, like just, the end stuff just self-corrects. Perfect. Just wanted to make that decision. Yeah, that's great. Thank you. Yeah, that's how you do it with heavy weight. Super. Yeah. Combat application. One way to ensure that you're not retreating too much and also that you're not moving so far forward that you can't keep your balance is exactly what we just did, which is basically like an ankle pick for an ankle pick game. If I'm coming up squirrely or imbalanced or retreating, there is no way that I'm going to detach this hand with any stability to pick that ankle. Meanwhile, if I climb up hard with a nice neutral base, and I get an opportunity to, I can turn this drill back into an offensive drill. So while we're defensive as we're climbing up, we're immediately offensive as we start to change position. And let's remember in the ankle pick, if we haven't practiced it, the hand has to be on the ground. If I grab the back of his calf, all he's going to do is punch me in the face. <laughs> and we're using a mechanical anchor, but we're also thinking that we're training partners right now. So we're not going to do a ankle pick where we're doing any type of percussive at the knee. We're going to C-clamp on the meat and your partner is going to let you get it. And then he's going to climb back up and he's going to do the exact same goddamn thing. Okay. If you're not comfortable with that or you haven't ever done a backfall, then we're not going to do it. If you have, then we will. And all we're doing here is making sure that we understand where our base is when we climb back up from that Turkish kiddo. Partner up! Not a break call? No. He's been getting swept. He's got less. He knows how to hit the ground. <laughs> <laughs>
I'm just, I mean, it, it doesn't help that it's like my thing. I like like sweet things. Oh, no. Join the dark side, Sean. Yeah, because I felt bad. Oh, 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 oh. oh. Who, you, who knew Beast still knew how to do it? Laughing jitsu. at Brandon, doing mean things to me. <laughs> Brandon, always being a bully to the, the little fuck. Oh, come on, Sean ain't that little. Like, this kid grew up a lot. Ha <laughs> <laughs> I didn't see any. You didn't see any. <laughs> to this drill, something that we're big on, especially with people that are transferring strength skills to other applications, is seamlessly and with dexterity getting your asses off the ground. So we'll look at the elevator sit-up first and then we'll and then we'll look at the rocking chair. The elevator sit-up is also a great complement supplement to a Turkish get-up someone is stuck at a Turkish get-up position, if someone is just not able to do a Turkish get-up, this, this is a, a great way to do it. The other thing it helps is reminding what this foot needs to do in a heavy squat. So today we'll take something light, hold it in front of us at chest level. It's not momentum, it's stability, so it doesn't move around. Reverse lunge opposite leg, same as the Turkish get-up, but now tuck the foot. <coughs> sit behind it. Stay upright and switch. Realign. Drag your knee out. Up. Good. Same belly, fat belly as, as all the other lifts. We're not tall, we're not round. So let's grab something light, hold it in front of you, practice some elevator sit-ups. You're also welcome to make tension with your body by grabbing your wrist really hard. And you're just gonna fall. Yeah, yeah. Over the foot. Stay on train tracks, not a tight rope. So a good, a good point just came up. Way down and way up. Train tracks, not a tight rope. We find we're unstable and we're doing everything else mechanically correct. Always look at where your feet are placed. So the cue we use is train tracks, not a tight rope. So wide, like you would deadlift. Narrower is also fine. But of course, this is going to be harder to hold. And therefore, with any external object or any external force, it's going to be almost impossible to stay stable in. So when you're climbing up in the elevator sit-up, if you swing this leg too far back, you're going to have a lot of trouble standing up. So pull it right into train tracks or pull it right into the exact replica of your fighting stance. Okay? All right, so a couple more. Thank you. Same implement, same position. And again, train tracks, narrow ones though. Tuck your hips, brace up tight, chin down. We're going to roll to our back, stay braced while you're there, and then stand back up. If we miss it, you're going to roll back to your back again. You're not going to do any weird stuff with your legs. So essentially, if you miss the lift, let yourself fall.
When I'm on my back, I'm staying in a hollow body position, sticking my legs straight. And then as I'm starting to come back up, I'm pulling my heels towards my butt as hard as I can. We started doing it like this. It's fine. It doesn't always work when you're tired. It doesn't work as well heavy. We started to find that loading these heavy is valuable in short rep sets and works way better if you kick those legs straight. So, chin to your chest. Don't hit your heads on the ground. No breathing on your back or you'll flatten right out and you won't get up. So, try that. If you miss the lift, fall down safely. Don't move your legs wrong. I saw these ones and everybody doing them. So I was like, I got to try these out. Squat stance is, think about where you squatted best and then plant your feet there on the way up. You should feel a lot of power out of that bottom position there. Yeah, I told you, way harder. With no weight, it's a lot harder because you're having to manipulate it all yourself instead of like helping yourself. I don't feel near as sore as I do when I, you know, done any like Olympic style lifting or any. I mean, I'm sore, don't get me wrong, yeah. but I'm not like inhibited on my day-to-day -day movements or feeling like that. And, you know, to me, I also feel like from doing a lot of the martial arts, like the stability muscles are hit a lot more than it's just like laying this, picking up a big weight and putting it down like he was doing. So I, you know, to me, it's, it's amazing the gain that he did, but it's also like you like you were saying, you've worked a certain modality so long, your body's become so accustomed to it. You know, it's like being fighters for Chase and I, it's like throwing kicks, you know, it's real easy, but trying to get us to do squats all day long, fuck, you know, right. like the same sense you get a guy who squats all day long and try to get him to throw a roundhouse, everything's completely, you know. But, but, but as we know, the most dangerous thing is <coughs> right, right, absolutely. So elevator, rocking chair, really endless scaling to both of those things. We've seen elevators with everything from machine guns to other people to any different thing. Uh, we've seen rocking chairs up to 150 pounds with something locked into a bear hug, like a large medicine ball or something like that. And there's value to it, provided the lighter positions are on track. Um, the one thing with the elevator setup is when you do start progressing in it, don't ever accept this. So if you've got something super, super heavy, you go to drag that knee out from here and it doesn't want to, that's the, that's the, only, poten that's the only potential hiccup. So just address your position before you add weight. Just like everything else we've talked about today. The next really direct skill transfer thing that we do is medicine ball throws. Watch out, it feels exactly <laughs> like striking and it sequences exactly like everything else we're doing. The point that we make often that will resonate with this group is that leg, hip, arm, last does not dictate direction, it just dictates order of operations. So leg, hip, arm, last in a high pull. And leg, hip, arm, last in a strike or a medicine ball throw is exactly the same. All I've done is change direction of the object. We haven't changed strategy, we haven't changed order of operations. Any of you that have ever competed or any of you that have ever achieved any level of striking knows that the arm punchers are never the ones that you need to be afraid of. <laughs> so when we're practicing it on the wall, it's the same exact game. Anytime we can, these hands go back to your chin. If I'm practicing this drill, we've got soft medicine balls that I'm comfortable throwing and changing directions. If I miss the retap, then I omit and repeat the rep because, because uh, to me, in, 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 in my view right now for myself, um, the cover is more important than the throw. Retrieval in a squat, not a hinge. Why? 
Who wants to get soccer kicked in the fucking face? <laughs> no one. Hopefully not. My Hopefully opponent. the answer is a resounding no. <laughs> so, squat don't bend to pick that thing up. Right? Yes, sir. If I drop my $5,000 iPhone and Chase is coming after me, I'm not going to go to pick it up like this. I'm going to pick it up like this. And I may still get hit, but I'm not going to get hit as hard, and I'm only going to hit it once. Okay. All right. Let's practice. Light first. Let's throw the harder ones. The softer ones don't tend to bounce quite right. And they're losing sand. They're losing sand. Get the, sorry. Oh, you're good. You're good. Don't worry. Turn your chin, B. Turn your face. Away. Light hip arm last and kickboxing covers. So don't change the mechanics you know while changing the tool. It's one of my favorites. I tell them all the time. <laughs> you got it, you got it. Let's throw from the pocket. If we're expecting a skill to transfer, we have to address the skill in a way that will transfer. That makes sense, correct? Okay, so if I'm going to throw a ball, and this is not where I would punch from, then I'm doing a different thing for a different reason. If I'm doing a similar thing for the same reason, then do that. Okay? Okay. You're close. Step closer to the wall. It's like stay up on the red, yeah. Let's keep your hands on your Look at some non-gimmick sit-ups that you don't have to do 500 reps of in order to find exactly what you're looking for. Oh, is this My grab oh, Jim, you guys that have that right there, man. And then after that, then we'll answer questions. We'll do we'll do whatever else you guys were, you guys were interested in that, that wasn't necessarily addressed, or that may need to be a little bit improved, or, or something like that. And then um, anything anything that these guys place would like to see them that would be a priority. When, when we think Just about yeah, sit-ups, yeah. it's the same as weightlifting. Why would we do more than we need to to elicit the response that we want or the progress that we need? We were making this <laughs> analogy yesterday. If you could do 400 crunches. That has just proven itself an ineffective exercise. It's the same thing as Chase swinging a 25 pound kettlebell. He could do that for three hours and he will be tired, but he will not be stronger. You agree with that? I agree. The mindset is exactly the same with sit-ups, especially since when we're bracing appropriately and holding hard like we've learned how to do today and practice today, you're doing a sit-up every single time you lift the weight. So a lot of the sneaky midline stability building happens loaded with weight and in the daily training. So we don't have to overstack sit-ups because everything is a sit-up when you're addressing it as such. Loaded holds and carries are one of our favorite sit-ups. That happens from the exact same position as we were in today. Unless you're doing it for money or a competition, it doesn't happen here. Pistol grip, big broad chest, tuck tips, walking on train tracks. With the weight that's in this room and a little creativity, you could make an absolute monster with nothing but push-ups and farmer holds. Don't tell the world that. When we're thinking about actual sit-ups, the first thing we want to do, and we teach the mobile version of it first in the rocking chair because it's a little less discouraging, is the, is the hollow body position. We start seated, and we're going to lean back just onto the low back, not on the sit bone. It's not a yoga hold. Point the toes. Stay braced up. Once you feel that tip back, then that's where we'll hold the position. Once we're decent at it, you can put your thumbs back, but not here. It's impossible to be in a hollow position here because there's an arch. If we need to, we can anchor here. If we need to, we can anchor here. But there should be no margin for error there. That should be hard from the minute you started if you're doing it correctly, no matter how strong you are. So, seated. Braced, chin to your chest, make one piece out of your legs, tip back, and hold as hard as you can. Let's get a let's get a 10 count for a few rounds. If you can get your arms here and stay hollow, great. If you need to anchor here, then we'll do that. And don't cheat it. If your upper back is on the ground, it's not a hollow position. Good. 
and tip back onto the low back, not the sit bone. Tension, not balance. <laughs> Good. A couple of 10 counts up here, that'll be fine. Let's do a couple of those. Good. Good. Tip yourself back a little bit. You're holding great, you're just up. Roll it back. Just a little this bit. Yeah, there we go. As soon as you feel your face oh. shake, you know we got the sit up right. Yeah. Hey, yeah, you don't. You a lot fewer goes. That's right. So, so with something like that, you know, a duration-based hold, max duration hold for three or four sets, all valuable strategies. Uh, always better done at the end. Last thing you want to do is cast your guts out before lifting heavy weight. Mm -hmm. Yeah, you can do. You can do kind of punches and everything you right. You have to isolate the muscle. Um, I mean, I'm not a crunches guy, so I would say I wouldn't ever do crunches. But uh, I, I would do these at the end of any training session, okay. not to complete failure. And then, as we were talking about earlier, especially earlier in the week, our training weeks start really, really heavy and really, really demanding. And as they continue, and we've already taxed what requires the most, then we start to dissect the rest. So things like sit-ups, things like dexterity, base, mace, and kettlebell stuff tend to happen towards the middle to the end of the week. And the heavier stuff happens at the beginning of the week when people tend to be a lot more fresh and, and you know, physically and mentally engaged. Once we've found that we can keep this position, then the next game here is rocking in this position. But rocking without rocking. Right? So it's tension, not movement, that creates the rock. So once we've broken into that position, as hard as you can, hold. See if we can rock a little bit. If we can't today, it's no problem, we will soon. Don't force the rock. If it doesn't work, it doesn't work. Great. Good. All right. Yeah. Makes it look so easy on the floor. Yeah, yeah, in in person. There's a yeah, reason these seminars are on the four hours. Yeah, we talked about this yesterday, too. And just a tiny strategy on that. I mean, people people teach these epic three and five day strength and conditioning things and all this kind of stuff. And of course, if we had barbells and a few other tools, we would need to make a slight time adjustment to certain pieces of what we've done. But there, there is no amount of information in three to five days that could be absorbed like a shorter, <coughs> brief, clear piece like this. I've been to both. After the second day of something like this, if you're expected to apply and think at this level, you're just not firing at all cylinders. I don't care who you are. So we try and truncate things, but not remove any detail, and it just helps us practice communicating with clarity and brevity, just like we need to do in a group setting. As you guys well know, if you take 100 words to describe something that should have been done in five, you've lost the attention of that participant. And, and the chances of them absorbing what was told to them is significantly lower, no matter how much they care. Once we found the hollow position and the hollow rock, then we turned it into a V-up. And that's just hands and feet meeting in the middle, but hands never touching the ground. Exactly. So he's in that hollow body position, hands and feet are meeting in the middle, but he's not opening and closing. So if he were to open and close all the way to the ground, yeah, open and close, no. He's going closed to more closed, which is why even at a strong dude, he's only been able to do a handful of those. Meanwhile, the other ones, if you flop open and close, you can do that all day. So, nice and tight, same as we just found. At first, don't worry about how high your hands go, just get them to move. As it starts to work better, then we change the rain. <coughs> The reason we're adding this at the end is also to prove why this should be added at the end. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. If we if we blow all of you out with this in the first 20 minutes, I can almost guarantee how the rest of the afternoon would have looked. <laughs> Everybody's laughing. He's especially laughing because he's obviously done this right and wrong. Yeah. Right? Yeah. 
I think that it's strictly conditioning seminars where we start with heavy things like this, and then everything's downhill. Yeah, yeah, yes. <laughs> anyway, so we, we, we look through the hollow body progression. You could do nothing but that as far as sit-ups, and then when you're done, turn over and get some good, strong cat-cow stretches to open it all up. Unscientific, simple, arms are straight. If the arms are wiggly, you're losing what you try and get in oscillating that flexion extension. So, arms are straight and strong and locked right into the, locked right into the ground. <laughs> when we talk about training at and past intended end ranges, we want to do so safely and light, but we want to do so. If we never train past intended end range, we're just right for injury because we will end up there. Everyone makes mistakes in lifting. Part of what the maces and kettlebells do well is insulating those, those unexpected positions. So that's also what we think about with sit-ups. We only have one ab mat, and we're not ab mat salesmen, but you should get some because this is a really valuable tool. <clears throat> Standard ab mat sit-up is just controlled extension and then sitting up at the top, just like we do in the rest of the weightlifting that we did. Feet are wherever you really want your feet, except for anywhere stupid. That is going to be easy for most of you. The only thing that will be challenging for some of you is the mobility there. So your butt stays on the floor, all your shoulders are also on the floor. For me and for many people, the mat backwards is better. It's better the other way for you. It's better the other way for you. The one that we actually like is the prison at mat sit-up. And we've changed it to, instead of this, which goes out the window pretty fast, this. Interlace your fingers. Put them right at the base of your skull, and then pull them apart as hard as you can while you're pushing your head back. Don't accept any reps where your elbows come in front of your ears. Let's at least try a few of these each. It'll be helpful. Both are fine. The ad man is really bad. It's hard to train that extension safely. Yeah. This is really good. What's up? 20 bucks. Yeah. Yeah. Adamant is super cheap and well worth the investment. So it's but if we were looking at this as a more with less type situation, don't count anything that your arm comes in front of your ear. <coughs> there we go. Difference? Different. And doesn't the ad mat also like focus and make you work more on using your abdominal muscles to sit up instead of like sometimes when you do like these ones on the ground, you engage the other muscles around to help you pull yourself up? So yeah, it's more partially for sure. So like the up and the, the hollow bodies and stuff are safe, but you're not doing that. This does that, um, but it only absolutely does what that fucking head. Yeah. So when your arms in front, a lot of times based on the finish yeah. you have people like move their upper body first. Yeah. Then they do exactly what you say. Oh, yeah. right. oh, I can't. Another 50 yep. push up. Let's we'll see where they come past your ears when you do it. Chase now, Sean. Over here. And this is a strong dude. He's been moving great today. Let's take a look at how he's doing yeah. this sit up. So that's a hole in the boat. Yeah. I don't know much about his grappling, but I know that if I wanted to keep him on his back and I was in top side control, I know I could do so. Because what is the primary mover in getting his back <coughs> off the ground when someone has you on your floor? Yeah. Good. Oh no, Greg, I think you should try his ground game. No, I know he's awesome. I'm trying to insult him. It does fit. I rely a little bit on my flexibility and now. A little bit? 
I'm gonna hold you accountable. It's not even that for me. Like at a certain point, my like I'm so big that my body's just like we have no more. It doesn't squish anymore. <laughs> well, it's the same thing with like when we squat in the gym. Like I get down to a certain point, my body's just like you either have to open your legs yay wide to go down further, or it's just not happening today. <clears throat> <laughs> This dude had surgery and still moved faster than that. That's all that I'm saying. Two years ago, <laughs> yeah. he moved faster than well, you. I've seen. Yeah, good. Get him back. Before everyone starts doing their own thing, I'd like to document the progress for this time. This year to next year, so I'd like to get a group photo of everyone before we start meditating around. Right on. I got something I kind of want everyone to try real quick before we end the day. If that's okay with you, great. Um, can you use Sean? Uh, <clears throat> you onto his shoulder, uh, your human body. So, normally, I was to go in for a double leg. What is this position? And if I want to lift, do I lift here? No, sir. No. Feet of my hips. Just like you do the kettlebell swing. So that's how whatever side my head is on. And also, a quick note here, if you guys can see, the closer I get my knees to him, the better. The more I'm going to be able to blast him with my hips. Get someone about your own size and see if you can accomplish that. Just get a clean lift and then set him back down. On the other side of the shoulder, just so we get the full transfer of that movement to combat. We should brace before we lift. What I'm watching is you lift from a squat soft, simply because you can pick him up that way doesn't mean you should. So let's address it. Brace hard before you lift someone off the ground. The other thing that's going to do is exactly how you saw him demonstrate. There's a violence to that that is not present if he lifts soft. He can lift me soft, for sure, but he can lift me harder, faster, and more violently hard. So, what a part about transferable concepts that it's all the same. Yeah, and violence and action. I mean, I do need that. It's all the same goddamn thing. If you're lifting a weight, brace yourself. <laughs> the weight may have a beard. You still brace yourself. Right. <laughs> 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 I do. Yes, sir. So, good progression. So, like today, we've gone through a lot of, uh, I mean, from soup to nuts. I mean, it looks like we got about a year's worth of material here to work on or, or whatever. So, if, say, we're starting here in our gym, uh, start from like where we saw the first. Make sure we get our alignment, get our legs, get our knees, right? Work on the proper hinge. So, before we, get, we move on, we want to make sure that we build the base. proper base and get the proper basics, right? Yep. And until you can hit that, we don't add. Yes, and, and the reason that I believe that resonates so well here is that is that I know for a fact that's exactly how you handle martial arts training. Weight, weightlifting strategy is no different. And, and most people today demonstrated at least safe progressive it doesn't have to be perfect it just has to be safe and then it can start to move forward right but but the reverse is also true like for example you know I, I've been using chase swinging 25 pounds um, the, the, the the linear progression there is, is never going to match what he's doing in other realms so we, we want we want strategy and si stimulus in all relevant realms to run parallel tracks if the strategy is get stronger and more powerful as opposed to just get tired <clears throat> The stimulus has to complement that, and then that's. I think that's that's part of the takeaway from today. Like we we, we moved through weights yesterday, and how long were we here? Two hours yesterday. Yeah, we we're just around about two hours. Um, 
we move through every weight in the place systematically, and by the end, everything that we had in the building was a baby rattle, and there's some of that he might not know, you know, so the, the basics don't have to take forever to get better at, but we have to make sure the boxes are checked before. before right, I mean, it could take a week, or it could take or a day, or an hour, or whatever, but. And for some people, it takes a long time. Right. I, there, was a, there was one girl named Cricket that trained at our place, and she'd been an athlete her whole life, and she was an absolute animal, and for whatever reason, she just had a mental hiccup with the kettlebell snatch. So two or three years into her, into her, you know, training there, that was still her clunkiest movement. Meanwhile, everything else, I mean, this girl could do front levers, this girl could do skin the cats on anything. Um, she was an animal with a barbell, but that particular thing just, just, you know, tripped her circuits. So everybody's going to have something like that too. The nice thing about a global <coughs> linear progression as opposed to like a single implement or a single movement linear progression is that something is always advancing. So if you're doing it right and your barbell deadlift plateaus, I think plateaus is a nonsense word, honestly, and we just proved that with Jerem. But everything else will move forward if something else is stuck. So one lift may be, I don't know, moving slower than something else, but if you're doing things correctly, everything else will be progressing at the same time. That's that's how that's how we never that's how we never stop progressing in either martial arts training or, or strength training. Yeah. All right, thank you. Great, good job. Any questions? Will you be joining us this evening? I hope so for a little while. Yeah, okay. I'm gonna go eat and then I'll come find you. Right on. Yeah. Do you have a mace that you might have with you to bring out there? Do we need to bring one of ours? In case we bring decide to start swinging around. Oh yeah, yeah. No, I'll bring one of these. Okay. Yeah, I only have one with me. And and um, uh, 64 kilo, and it's and it's 350 pounds. No. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Like, no, no, we, 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 we really do have the baby rattles in. I gotta yeah. say, you know. Yeah. <clears throat> Thank you. All right, little, little like you said, let's Thank get a photo. Oh, Everybody's get a photo. photo. Can you take the photo, my dear? Yes. Would you please? Oh, uh, the mat. Yeah. Yeah. Is this the opposite of art style? Oh, hell. I know. <laughs> yeah, you're needing to like chase. Yeah. Alright, one, two, three.